I was born in a small town in Poland called Zawierski in 1913. I uh, passed away in 2009. I was 94. I am also a Jew. I was 19 when the Nazis created a ghetto in Sokal in 1941. I was 26 when the Third Reich took power in Germany. It was 1933. I was the youngest sister of two older sisters, two middle sisters, three brothers, one of whom was my twin. I had four brothers and two sisters. None survived. None survived. All my family, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends, all died in the gas chamber, including my parents, Juna and Rila Sharp. I am the only survivor. I was from a wealthy family. We owned a tailor shop. We had a wonderful life. Then there was the ghetto. Yes, the ghetto. Uh, my family owned a flour mill manufacturing company and bakery. Uh, our address was, was 23 Fabrisen. We made flour for our whole community. Then, when we were forced to relocate to the ghetto, I heaped pictures of my family in the basement of the store. And when I returned, I found them. I have them still. I have them. We were Orthodox Jews. When they, uh, the Nazis, created a ghetto in so in 1941, they took our family business and forced us to live and work in the ghetto. I was forced to work at the Gestapo headquarters. My father was killed by the Gestapo chief. My mother, with my sister, was killed in the assault called uh, Free from Jews. After each action of force, I lost a sister or a brother. I survived a bullet to the head at the headquarters one day. There was Stalag 8. At 27, I was redrafted into the Polish army to fight the Germans. When we surrendered to the Germans, I was sent to work in the fields at Stalag 8. When I cut my arm, it became infected. This, the incision the doctors made was in the shape of a swastika. I survived to be sent back home. My family was sent to the ghetto. Again, I survived the torture, disease, and starvation, mass murders. I, I remember the children. A random killing of children because they felt like it, whenever they felt like it. I was Treblinka during the 1944 assault on the ghetto. I was 22 and was taken by train in the cattle car with my oldest sister, Adela, and her six-month-old baby. We were the last of our family to live and live so called. The train was going to Treblinka. There was a, a small window in the cattle car, and together my sister and I broke the glass, and she pushed me out of the train. I never saw her again. Went to public schools. I was a very good student. <laughs> As I was Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau. At Auschwitz, I was chosen after 30 seconds for the strong line, not the death line, the strong line for Birkenau. I never understood why I was chosen for the strong line. I was not a strong man. There was the Gestapo headquarters. I was selected to work at the Gestapo headquarters, a former convent. I was forced. I was chosen to work in the sugar beet fields. I, I was not strong enough. There was not enough food, water. I survived a bullet to the head at the headquarters one day. They said I had stolen food. I would have been buried by the south fence of the headquarters. I survived. This was a... Uh, then I was taken by train with my sister and her baby. Then she pushed me from the train. That was Birkenau. It was a death camp. I saw my fate. Death 
by labor. So I requested the commanding officer to send me to Auschwitz, which was next to Birkenau. And he said in public, I was a hero because I volunteered. I would be one less prisoner to supervise. <laughs> I remember in my barracks, right? In my barracks, I, looking out the window, I saw the dark clouds and red glow. Clouds produced by, in the winter of 1944, when the Germans were losing to the Russians, we were sent to Grossroth. It was a death march. 30,000 and only 2,000 survived. Again, I survived. Was Krakow. I was sent back to the convent and traveled by train to Krakow, telling everyone I met I was Catholic. <laughs> but I was soon discovered. And it's into a labor camp where I met Marta. Oh, she promised to help me hide from the Nazis and found me a job as a maid with a family. But she betrayed me. Because she discovered I was a Jew. <laughs> Her boyfriend did not. He hid me in his apartment for months. A, a little room. I, I never left, not once. He, he traveled with me back to Poland and verified with documents that I was Catholic and his illegitimate daughter. But a woman there suspected I was a Jew and tried to poison me. I knew something was wrong. So I gave it to the boys at the window. And yes, it was laced with poison. I was moved to a monastery in Bavaria where I was arrested in 1945 and remained in prison until the American troops liberated Berghausen. <laughs> they didn't believe I was a Jew. They didn't believe I was a Jew. There was the death march. Rose Rose in Germany. There were 25 girls I knew from my hometown, people who were familiar to me. If we made hand grenades together, I would mix the good with the bad. I was the last to inspect them. Then, we were marched to Dachau, Germany, a death camp. There were 25,000, and only 2,000 survived. Again, I survived. I knew. I was the only Jew alive. <laughs> they didn't believe me that I was a Jew until I convinced them by going to old age homes that I would read Hebrew prayers to the Jews residing there. Just to verify, I was Jewish. Then on to Dachau. At Grossroth, and there were piles and piles of, they were like mountains. Then we were taken to Dachau. This is where I planned my escape. And no one else would go because they were afraid. When they were putting us on the train, I jumped. <coughs> the soldiers shot their rifles, but it was too dark to hit a moving target. I walked out a free man. This is where I, I found villages and, and uh, survived by taking laundry off lines, uh, finding dry potatoes by barns, my only meal in days. I was determined to be a free man. Then there were many things that almost took away my freedom. I even had to register with the Nazi papers. <laughs> There's so much more. So, much more. In 1945, the Russian soldiers said the war was over. With a little money, I returned home. There was nothing there. Then, there was the Freeman guy. 
David and I, we met at the camp in Munich for survivors. Yes, we came here in 1950 with nothing but each other. I passed away in 2009. <laughs> I was 94. I passed at the age of 68. It was 1990. Eternity, Eternity gave us our, our beloved, beloved children, children and, and their children. children. Eternity, Eternity has offered us these memories, memories to play over and over again. This is my wife, Lola. This is my husband.